Hey y'all. All right, we are back out here on the Ram Charger again today. I'm my goal is to uh, get the carburetor off, get it inside, and have a look at it and see what's going on with it. Also, I'm going to be replacing this really, really ancient hose, which I just rubbed my finger on it, and part of it is actually coming off on my finger. So, when rubber gets really old, that's what happens. So, I'm going to replace that. It runs down through here. And I'm probably also going to replace this fuel filter. Um, I'm going to put a clear one in place of it right now. And then later I'll be going with something a little more correct. A little bit more like this. So, and uh, I'm also going to be replacing some fuel hose that's right... You can't hardly see it, but right there's part of it right there. So that's what I'm going to do today. So let's get busy. Um, first off, you want to have some sort of container to put all your hardware in. Okay? You do not want to lose your hardware. Okay? You've got a lot of little small clips and, you know, things like that. So I'm going to start with throttle return spring. Let's see, that moves really nicely, so that's good. Our kick down linkage, take that off. Um, we've got our throttle cable right here. There's a little clip right here that I've got to take off. It's probably kind of hard to see, but there's a little clip right there that's got to be removed. I'll probably get the carburetor off and then turn this around, and then I'll be able to see it. All, although, I could just unbolt this and then just slide it out altogether. Um, let's see. If you have a lot of vacuum hoses, you may want to like label them, but I'm making this video, so you know what? I can just go back and watch the video. So, also, you want to pay attention to all the hoses you take off, what kind of shape they're in. Are they cracked, broken, you know, anything like that? If they are, they're going to cause a vacuum leak. So, these little clips right here, they're great. All you got to do is just push on them a little bit. You may, yeah. You may have to use like a pair of pliers. Oops. Yep. Drop that. But right there it is. They just go around the rod like that. And then once they're on, you just, you, they go around the rod like that. And then they go down and they clip on. Okay. Let me show you a little different view. So, you see, they just go down and clip on like that. Okay. But you got to make sure that the rod is in, connected to the part there that you're wanting to do. So, you got to, it's kind of this little bit of monkey business there. All right. So, you, <clears throat> but you, you, you get the gist of what I'm talking about. So, put that over there. That's our choke thermostat right there. So, we got that done. I see another little vacuum leak back there, too. So, what we're going to do is next... this hose off right here wow that was tight but I have a little vacuum leak back here and right here it is yeah that nipple see that nipple just came that hose must have got jerked off at some point in time yeah, there we go okay uh, this is not the factory stock carburetor, okay? So, in case anybody's wondering. But something you got to be aware of is you got these plastic lines here that take the place of vacuum hoses, and they supply a vacuum to the heating system uh, inside the, the truck. Uh, so, all right. Um, I think that's all for all of the vacuum hoses. I think all i got to do now is just get all of these four nuts off and I think they're little tiny little things I think they're 7 16 
they may be metric. They're not 7 sixteenths. Okay, they may be 3 eighths. Then. I don't know. All right. Yeah, they are 3 eighths. Okay. So shame on me, I didn't notice that. Okay. Well, all right, I'm going to uh, take all the rest of those nuts off. I'm going to get the throttle cable off and get this thing inside in the garage, get my fuel line off. Oh, that's probably going to be, let's see. All right, we got that. Okay, now, you see how I got that right there? I got two wrenches on that. There's a good reason why, I'll tell you. When I break this loose, I don't want this back, this fitting back here to spin, okay? Because in some cases, like on radiators, when you're taking like your transmission cooler lines loose, if you let that back uh, fitting spin or move, it may break something inside the radiator. So it's always a good idea, you know, break your, break the, the nut loose, okay? And then, but hold your fitting somehow, okay? So I'll give you, if I can set this camera up, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, see? Now what we're going to do is, we're going to, having to do this left-handed and I'm, I'm not left-handed <laughs> if you, you probably have noticed let me see if I okay there we go you notice I was just hitting it with my hand there just a little bit you just take this loose when you're unscrewing that you'll probably you may get a little fuel out um, this one's been sitting so I'm not expecting to get much fuel out of there. If it is, it's probably gonna be all ancient old gasoline. Basically what I'm gonna do with this carburetor today is just get it apart, clean it out, examine everything, and make sure everything's in good shape. That's all, because this carburetor has been rebuilt and it's not been run much since then. All right, I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna come right back and show you some more, okay? you right back okay y'all we're back um, I've got the carburetor off I have went ahead and put a clean rag down in here to stop any kind of contamination any kind of anything falling down in there and being a getting down inside the engine and being a problem um, whether you know some critter drops it down in there which which you can see there's all kinds of little acorn shells or if I drop it in there <laughs> so there you go. Okay. All right. I'm going to get busy replacing these hoses. And uh, this is not like especially exciting or anything like that. But I thought I'd take y'all along with me so you can see what's going on, what you need to, you know, basically uh, make it maybe just a little bit easier for you. Um, first this hose right here that goes up to the carburetor wow that connect that uh, clamp is really really rusty Now, I'm going to show you something on how to get these old hoses off of this stuff. Now, on this here, I'm not going to, this old hose, I'll go ahead and get it off, but let's see. Take your knife, cut lengthways on the hose, okay, like that. You may have to cut more than once. You want to make sure you get all the way through the hose. Once you get through the hose, then you take, get the old, the old clamp out of the way, and then you want to twist this thing, okay? 
Now you can also take like a flat tip screwdriver and basically peel that off of there. Okay. See, now that just comes right off. It's no big deal. Now I'll show you something here about how bad this hose was. Now while this hose ain't under a tremendous amount of pressure, it does have some pressure on it. Now, a lot of carburetors like to operate with like five, six pounds of pressure. Some operate with as little, are happy with as little as three or four pounds. But look here, see the rubber chunking off? I mean, it's like, it's, it's literally just chunking right off, really, really bad. It's, see the rubber is just that's the outer coating of the hose is just flaking right off so it's, it's yeah it's pretty bad I wouldn't be surprised if this was uh, maybe maybe even I don't know I don't think it's stock but it's definitely not it's probably every bit 15 years old maybe older than that Okay, let's see, here we go, got the, got the fuel line here that goes to the carburetor, so we'll just cut the hose here again, just like I did earlier, get the hose off, just a little twist and the sucker comes right off there, but some, another way you know you got a bad hose is after you handle it for a little bit handle the hose and it just comes off on your fingers <laughs> so that's what another way to know but another way to tell is the exterior of it when it gets really dull like that it's usually it's bad okay it's usually just old dried out and needs to be replaced it's also been rubbing on like the alternator bracket right there you see that rusty spot that's where it was rubbing on the alternator bracket okay all right, I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to get to work on the rest of this stuff and show you a little bit more. Okay, y'all, we're back, and we're out here um, in the garage. I uh, just got the workbench cleaned off here just a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and get this choke pull-off hose off there. Um most of these fasteners on here are most of these screws on here are flat tip okay let's go ahead and start with this this little sheet metal cover right here that covers the uh part of the it covers the linkage that actuates the uh There we go. Yeah. Yeah, it actuates the uh, the plunger. Accelerator plunger. Accelerator pump plunger. Okay. Now, um, this gasket, I rebuilt this carburetor, but this gasket, but it's been like, you know, several years ago. But this gasket has been soaked in oil. So, there you go. Um... Now, what I'm going to do is, this is just a, a spiffy up, a tidy up, a clean up, whatever you want to call it. Um, let show you what I'm doing here. There's a, uh, this accelerator pump mechanism here has a rod that actuates it. The only way to get you, it's really hard to get it out right here. The best way to get it out is to take off this clip down here. Okay, so I'm going to just take that off. Probably the best way to do that, you can use hemostats, uh, some very small pliers. I'm just probably going to use some hemostats. I've done that in multiple different ways. 
stats. Can I get it off of the human stats? Maybe I can't. May, I may have to use some small pliers. I think I'm going to have to use, yeah, I'm going to have to use some small pliers. Okay, small needle nose. You just want to reach in there, get a hold of it, and just pull. That thing is really, really stubborn. Sorry about the shaky camera work. <sighs> My word. Okay, let's see. Let's turn this dude over and see what's going on. Oh, okay. I see. It's a clip. It's a little clip style. So I am going to have to use a screwdriver on that. Notice I got the carburetor kind of sitting there on that one stud. Now be aware, there is old gas in it. So I've got a little bit on my hands now. No big deal. Try to keep up with your parts. You know, don't. Don't let them get too far away from you. All right, let's see. Let me spin this around here. So y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm just gonna use the screwdriver to kind of get that thing, manipulate it and get it where I want it. And, of course, I dropped it. But I've got more of those. So it's not like the end of the world. Yeah. I've got more. Yeah. Yeah, i got more of them. So it's not the end of the world. And I'll probably find it when I'm sweeping up. So, okay. But anyway, got that off. Yeah. So, all right. Now, just set that aside there, that linkage. Okay. And I'm not going to mess with these screws here. And, uh, but I am going to go ahead and get this top portion of the carburetor off. Uh, we got one little clip right here. We got to get off. Okay. Okay, that controls part of the choke function. So, all right. You've got six screws that holds this top portion in here. Um, oh, you know, I'm just working away here and I never even bothered to say to anybody what in the world I'm working on. This is a Carter BBD. Okay, now when you're rebuilding one of these, or taking it apart, or something, you go back with these screws, put your little dab of anti-seize on the threads, makes life a whole lot easier for you. Just so you know, yeah, the old gas is in here, and it's really, 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 really nasty. It smells awful. Um, just to let you know, got all the new fuel hoses, fuel lines, all from the pump up to the carburetor, already installed. Um, they're looking great. Um got the clear fuel filter put in the factory uh, size on those fuel hoses is 5 16 so now when I pull this top part off I'm just going to I'm gonna pull the accelerator pump out with it Okay, so, uh, let's see, where can I do this at? I don't want to destroy the old gasket. That's what I'm trying to do here. There we 
go. All right, so see, I also left those back screws in. Okay. All right. Okay. Let you get a look there. See, there's also right there, there's my metering rods too. Okay. I'll explain how those work here in just a minute. Let's see. Okay. All right. I'm going to break this video off right now. We're already at the 20 minute mark. And I want to try to keep my videos down to like 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to make another video. I'm going to just pick right up here where I left off. And show you all the rest of this. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Thank you very much for watching. Also, thank you very much for all the subscriptions and the shares and the likes and the thumbs ups and all of that stuff. I really seriously do appreciate it. Uh, thank you all so much and God bless and have a great one. And uh, thank you.